So you're looking at the new MacBook Pro, the one with the touch bar, this is the 15 inch model. You know what, I, for some reason this thing has been controversial. A lot of people have made videos. I just received mine, it was a custom order. This one has all the specs, it's like five grand. Is it worth five grand? No, definitely not, all right? But for the purpose of this video, for the purpose of this channel, it's an interesting thing to cover as a topic, so whatever. But for the average person, they're looking at this thing and going, why would I get that instead of a used car? And that makes sense. You don't need to be paying this much money for computing power these days, especially when you're you're looking at a product that in many people's eyes has given up some of the versatility of the previous version. But I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on this thing as I open it up here, why I think Apple is doing what they're doing here and why this still might be a good machine for you. As you know, with Apple, you get a very expensive unboxing experience as well. It's very special, but you can see on the back here, this one, 2.9 gigahertz, so it has the upgraded processor, 16 gigs of RAM. Now this is a, uh, this is something I was reading about that actually does kind of bother me a little bit. Only the ability to get 16 gigs rather than 32. It's soldered onto the motherboard now, so it's not like you're gonna be able to upgrade that in the future. So if you need more RAM, it ain't happening here. The Radeon Pro 460, so the graphics, are one of the areas where there is a substantial improvement and not much of an argument between this version and the previous one. And I have the two terabyte SSD in here, which is gonna be nice. It's an incredibly exorbitant amount of money. I think that upgrade alone is like $1,400. Let's crack inside the box here. Ooh. It definitely feels slimmer than the old version. The Apple logo no longer lights up. It's got this mirrored finish like the 12 inch MacBook. And the other thing you're gonna notice is the ports. No more versatility there. You have Thunderbolt 3 in the form of this USB type C connector and you've got a headphone jack and that's it. USB type C connector cable, the laptop, no more MagSafe, that's kind of a that's kind of a letdown, right? MagSafe, you kick it, it pops out. In technology, you're always making compromises, right? Size, battery life, uh, thinness, portability, power. It's always a give and take relationship. In this case, you've got better throughput. In exchange, you no longer have the convenience of a MagSafe connector. 87 watt USB-C power adapter. That's all that's in there. Another thing to mention about this one, there's no more power switch. So you lift it up and it turns on. Before I boot it up, I just wanna do a quick comparison here with the older version. So what you'll notice beyond the fact that it's a tiny bit thicker is that the footprint is actually larger as well. How significant is it? Not major. So the previous MacBook, SD card slot, full-size HDMI and a USB port, old-fashioned style, compared to two Thunderbolt 3s and a headphone jack. And then the other side of the laptop, two USB Type-C connectors for your Thunderbolt 3. And then here we've got MagSafe, two Thunderbolt 2s, a USB and a headphone jack. From a throughput perspective, with four Thunderbolt 3 ports, you can do some things that you wouldn't be able to do here with the two ports or with the slower speed USB connector. Yes, you may have to adapt these for your current peripherals. I think it's only a short matter of time before we see maximum throughput hard drives and such that could take advantage of these ports. This laptop can output to two separate 5K monitors, right? Or three 4K monitors from a laptop. That's one of the benefits of having all this Thunderbolt access. Almost a terabyte of data in five minutes over this port. That affects my daily life. Ooh and it just boots up straight away. It does have Touch ID, so you can log in with your fingerprint if you like. The trackpad is gigantic, I'm just noticing now. It is clicky. It's clicky and it's loud, but just very low travel, right? Not, not very much key travel there. Now the trackpad is of course the haptic version. There's no physical click there. You can now use your fingerprint, not just to unlock the Mac, but also to make purchases. Close it, goes to sleep, pop it back open, Touch ID, boom! Now, I notice I can hit this button here and expand the multimedia controls here. Now, this touch bar will adapt to whatever application you're using. If it's Final Cut Pro, for example, you'll see a timeline in there. You could get emoji in there. But I mean, that's kind of the thing I think that's gonna take some getting used to and experimentation to truly figure out. New MacBook Pro, old MacBook Pro, trackpad. It's almost double the size, to be honest, measured diagonally. New one has more of a thump to it. Also, the screens, they're both at full brightness now, and you should be able to tell that the new screen is more vibrant. There's much more detail you can make out in the trees. It's a brighter screen, so. Now, the speaker grills look similar, but I have heard 
some very nice things about the sound maximum volume old macbook pro okay new macbook pro Ooh. 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 there's a little thump to it a little bit of low end in there the speakers are way better should you be upgrading if you got the old one probably not you can make the argument it's more versatile with all the ports that are available sd card slot and stuff like that are there some improvements to the new one sure right you got the nicer screen you've got all this thunderbolt 3 throughput if you can use it but this thing is more than five grand for most people they'd be better suited with a used car in their old macbook just remember it's a want it's not gonna all of a sudden do something for you that the old one couldn't but that said there's a bunch of people out there, they just want to have the latest and greatest, myself included. They are happy to sell at a high margin to a customer who has a lot of money to spend. That's their game. Who can evaluate value, right? It's it's so subjective, it's so personal. I mean, this entire package is very nice. I mean, it has been in the past, but it still is. It's a very nice package. How much is that worth to you? 